everybody. Let's go ahead and get started. I uh, hope you're all doing well today. Uh, just a reminder before we get started, uh, today is the due date of HTML me something, so if you already submitted it, great. Uh, if not, um, getting that submitted should be a top priority for you today, so uh, you know, please let us know, us being myself or the TFs, know what we can do to help, help you reach that goal today. Um, that should be a, a top priority for you. Um, the next assignment, I believe, has already been posted and it's not due for another, I wanna say like two weeks-ish, somewhere in there. Um, so if you got HTML made something done, might as well stay ahead of the game and start in on that next one because uh, they're just gonna keep coming. So uh, good to keep up with the stuff. Um, I think that's all the reminders that I had. So let's hop into today's material. Uh, all right, most important question of the day, by far. What the heck is a form? What is it? Somebody describe to me what a form is. What do we use forms for? User input. So a form is really just a way to get your users to type stuff in. We use forms all the time, all the time. Anytime you log into a website, that's a form. Uh, anytime you buy stuff online, right? have to enter your credit card information and your shipping address. That's a form. So forms are everywhere. They're extremely useful, um, but they do come with their own set of challenges. So today is really all about forms. How do we create forms? How do we uh, get that information from our users and do something useful with it? That is our goal for today. So let's dive in a little bit deeper with forms. Uh, what are some input types that a form can use? How, what are the different ways that we can ask our users to give us information? Checkbox. Checkbox. Oh, yeah. What else we got? Radio buttons. Yeah. I heard like three other ones, but I couldn't quite. Text is definitely an option. We got those, uh, what should you call it? The drop down boxes, right? Or it might be called combo. I learned them as combo boxes. I don't know if anybody calls them that anymore, but drop down boxes, same thing. Um, what else? I'm probably forgetting something. You guys know anything I'm forgetting? Maybe not. I'm sorry? Oh, button. Yeah, duh. That's a pretty good one. Uh, it doesn't have to be a submit button, although oftentimes we will use submit buttons on our forms, but I can make buttons for anything, anything that I want. Um, nowadays, people try to get fancier with, you know, how they let users input things. I'm sure you guys have seen things where uh, it pops up the little calendar display unless you go through and select the date, right? Um, but that's really just a text box most of the time with a fancy calendar attached to it. Um, so, you know, when you, when you see those fancier types of inputs, at the end of the day, if you look under the hood, it's really the same old inputs we've been using. Um, with just a little extra fanciness sprinkled on top. So how do we keep track of everything? If I ask you to enter your name and your address and your birth date and your credit card number, and then you ship all that stuff off to me, how do I keep track of what's what? How do I you know, make sure that uh, I understand what your, which one of those is your credit card and which one of those is your address? How do I keep from getting those mixed up? IDs, we're gonna label each one of those with an ID so that, um, once that information gets sent off to us and we want to do something with it, right? We want to use that information to perform some kind of an action that we've got an idea of what it actually means. So that we don't mistakenly, you know, send your uh, Amazon package to your credit card number. That would be really weird, right? Um, cool. And so then, uh, I've got this form, it's got a lot of lovely inputs and I've got IDs for all the inputs, right? And then eventually the user's gonna fill it out and they're gonna be finished and they're gonna click that submit button, right? To send the information off. But how do I know where it's going? How do I know where that information is actually headed? What's that called? Name? Any other action? Action is what I was looking for. So action, what is action? What am I gonna, action is a piece of information. Really though, it's what? It's a path, yeah, I like that, it's a path. It's a location on my website, right? That says, once this form has been filled out and completed, take the information and send it to this page over here, right? 
take this information, send it to this page over here. There's one other very useful piece of information, though, that we need to specify along with the action. What, what is the minor referring to? The method, right? And what are our options? Get and post. Get and post. I know we talked about this on Monday, but it's an important concept, so we're going to talk about it again. What's the difference between get and post? Get is much more visible. If I submit a form using get, what happens to that information on the form? It shows up in the URL, on the address bar, right? If I submit the information using post, it still gets sent to the page, but I don't see it in the URL anymore. I don't see it in that address bar. Um, so it's a, a little bit more obscured. And so then, once the information gets to that page, right, now it's our turn again. Now it's us, as the programmers, that have to get the information out of that form and do something with it. So how do we actually access that form data using Python? Um, there's more than one right answer to this. How do I actually get data out? Let's, let's back up for a second. Is it always the same for every single thing that I do? Accessing data? What does it depend on? The method, right? Accessing data from a get request is different from accessing data from a post request, right? So how do I access data from a get request? What do I have to say? I go through request. I'm sorry, request dot, dot args dot get. That sounds right to me, right? Request dot args dot get, and then I have to tell it what information do I have to provide to it? the name of the thing that I want, right? Credit card number, address, right? Um, name. Um, so I have to tell it the name of the argument, the name of the thing that I'm looking for. It's a little bit different for a post request. What's the difference between how we do this for a post request? What does it look like instead? Request.form, and then what? Square brackets, and then the name of the thing that I'm looking for. What type is that? We've seen that before, right? Square brackets with the name in there. What's that called? Dictionary. Yeah, good. It's a dictionary. It's a dictionary. That's what it is. I, I give it a, a name of something and it tells me back what that value is. What if I ask for a value that's not there? What am I going to get back? I'm sorry? Key error? None. I would think it's just going to tell me none. Yeah. It might be an error in some cases, though. Uh, I'm trying to think of what, what would cause uh, that kind of an error to exist. I think it would probably just give you none. I think it would say just, here you go, nothing. Um, cool. So in the prep work, you actually went through a lot of, uh, uh, you went through an example of processing forms. You also went through a simple flask example for um, um, processing forms as well. And we're about to go through a form example using our FlickList application. But before I switch over to that, does anybody have any general questions about uh, any of these concepts that we talked about? Or are there any concepts from the prep work that you were hoping I would talk about today that I didn't cover? Yes. Between name and ID. Um, Okay, so can somebody help me out here? What's the difference between using the name attribute and the ID attribute? Does anybody have any ideas about that? Yes? You should only have really one ID, but you could have a collection of names that represent multiple things that are kind of working together. Yeah, so uh, a good, good uh, I like that description a lot. ID uniquely identifies an element. But a name can identify a collection of elements, and where we would often see something like this is with uh, a group of checkboxes, right? Where I have a whole bunch of checkboxes that are kind of related to each other. They're not the same, of course. They're all different, but they're in the same group. So I might apply the same name to, the, to that group of checkboxes and then pull out each one individually using their IDs. I think that's a great way of describing it. Um, IDs are unique, names are less unique, I guess. Good, any other questions? Any other questions? Uh, all right, so we're gonna spend uh, the rest of the, today's review time doing the walkthrough. It's actually kind of a lengthy walkthrough, um, and it does have a significant chunk of code. So um, uh, if I go too fast, please tell me to slow down. I, I know I tend to 
get a little carried away and type really fast. So if that if that happens today, please um, holler at me. Let me tell me to slow down. Uh, what we want to do today is uh, we're actually going to take the Flicklist application that we started on Monday, and uh, we're going to throw it away. We're going to chuck it. Uh, we're going to start over from scratch, mostly from scratch. We'll keep a very small amount of the code that we used on uh, Monday. Um, and the reason for that is because we want to make our site more interactive. We want to make our site a lot more interactive. We want our users to be able to give us information, and we want to create a much more dynamic website. So um, we're going to start to form this idea of a user telling us a list of movies, right? Tell us the movies that you want to add to your list, and we'll add them to the list. That's sort of the idea for today. So you can tell me any movie you want, and I'll add it to your list. Now, a little caveat before we get started here. We're not actually going to add it to a list. <laughs> We're going to say that we add it to their list, but we don't have a way of actually saving that information right now. We will, uh, very soon, we'll have a way of actually remembering what they told us, but we don't actually have that right now. So all we're going to do for now is set up that interface where the user can type in the name of the movie. We'll gather that information and tell them, hey, we got your request. And then later on, we'll make it more permanent. We'll make it more of a usable application. So we're, we're going to set up the first little building blocks for that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the walkthrough here and try and follow this as closely as I can. Um, right, so we're going to get rid of this movie of the day stuff that we did. Not that it was a bad exercise, I think it's a great exercise, it's just not our ultimate goal. Um, so we're going to start forming this list. Um, so first thing we need to do, if you haven't done so already, open up Git Bash. Let me see if I can zoom in so you guys can actually see, see this text. Am I on the, I'm not even in the right directory, uh, which is okay, right? Maybe you're not in the right directory either. Go to your home directory, hopefully. Can you guys see this all right? Do I need to, it's fine? Okay, good. Um, let me know if I need to make the text bigger or mess with the lights or anything. Um, go to your home directory and then hop into the LC101 folder that you've got or wherever your LC101 folder is. I don't know where you put it, um, right? That's just where I happen to put mine. Uh, there's my Flicklist Flask directory. Okay, now um, the branch that we were working on was Studio One. This is the branch from, oops, I'm sorry, I typed in the wrong command, my fault. You guys might already be on the Studio One branch. If it says Studio One here, you're already on the Studio One branch from Monday. I was just double checking my work before class, so I was moving around and checking some other stuff. That's why I wasn't on the right branch. Um, but you should hopefully be on the Studio One branch from when you completed the studio on Monday's class. And your code, you know, uh, your code may not look exactly the same as mine, but it should, you know, complete the, the studio, right? Um, before we can get to today's walkthrough, we need to commit our code. I've already done this. I've already committed my code for the studio. Um, but if you haven't, you definitely should commit your code. So, you know, do get status to take a look at what files you need to commit. You see that mine don't have anything, although I can change that. Uh, let me just change that so you guys can follow along with me. All right, get status, right? It says main.py has been modified, so I'm gonna add that. And then I'll commit, and I'll type in a message. It says something like studio one completes, right? We did it. Studio One is complete. We should commit that code. Yeah. I'm sorry? Uh, after I went into my flick list folder, all I did was I added the, the changes that I made to main.py and I committed them. I, I've made some fake changes just so that I could show you how to do the commit and, and stuff. I had already committed them before class, but I wanted to show you how to do that process as a reminder, so I just added some spaces on the end to force it to do a commit. Yeah? Um, I think if I'm ahead of the origin by one commit, it's not a two commit. 
Uh, I mean, if you do get status and nothing shows up, then you're golden. You got nothing to you got nothing to worry about. You're good. Yep. If you do get status and you don't see anything on there, then what that really means is that you probably committed at the end of class on Monday, and that's probably a good thing, right? I would actually rather see that that you commit before you leave a class, save your work. Um, but if you didn't, now is a good time to do that. And once we've got our work committed, we can switch over to a different branch. We want to keep our work separated out for different projects. So we're going to switch over to a different branch for today's walkthrough. And then after we're done with the walkthrough, you'll actually switch branches again for the studio. And that's, that's explained in the instructions uh, for today. Um, but for now, we're going to say git checkout walkthrough 2. Okay. So it switched me to this branch. And if I go to the code now, you'll actually see that it looks a little bit different. The biggest difference that I see is that it uh, changed the movies, right? It picked different movies than I did, um, which, you know, I like some of these movies. Some of them I've never heard of. Um, some of them are okay, I guess. Uh, but uh, this is the quote unquote official course sanctioned solution to the studio. So you're welcome to review that if you want to, but it, it looks very much like what we did uh, in class on um, Monday. And what I'm gonna do next is delete all of it. I'm gonna blow it away. We're gonna do something different. Uh, when I say all of it, I mean almost all of it, not actually all of it. But uh, I'm gonna, whoops, misclick there. I'm gonna get rid of this random movie business. I deleted almost everything. Here's what I'm left with, right? So I'm gonna give you a moment. I don't wanna go too fast. I'm gonna give you a moment. I deleted everything that was in that index method. It's gone. I still have return content. We're gonna make new content. We're gonna create new content here in just a moment. Right. I got rid of the random movie stuff. We're not interested in random movies anymore. We're interested in movies that the users tell us. Right. Any questions? Anything anybody needs from me before we dive in? Can you go back to the other screen? The get the command line? I'm sorry? I can't quite hear you. Yeah. I'm ready to start typing code, so I'm ready to I'm ready to start typing stuff. So what we want to do, our goal for today's walkthrough is to make a way for a user to tell us a movie. Right? And that's that's really our that's really our main goal. Our goal is to that's part one, I guess. Give a way for a user to tell us a movie. And then we're gonna take that movie, we're gonna peel it out of the form and say, we added this movie to your list. That's our goal for today. That's what we're trying to do. Um, so we need to start constructing, in this method now, we need to start constructing a form. What do we want our form to, to contain? So I'm gonna start creating this content variable again. I'm gonna use triple quotes. What do the triple quotes do for me? A very, a very long string, right? Triple quotes are good for very long strings, which is, we're, this is gonna be a long string, you guys. Uh, so I'll put the end down here, and then we just need to fill the rest out. This is gonna be, a, uh, this is gonna be our quote unquote front page, right? This is gonna be our, the, the home page of our website. This is gonna be what people see when they first come to our website, right? Uh, so, What's the first part of a page? What's the first part of any HTML page? We do the doc type. This will be a good review of some HTML concepts. What's the next part? HTML, and then I'm gonna try and keep my indentation relatively good. I might screw it up, but what's the next thing that we usually see? We see a head. And then inside of that head, we usually see a title. So this is your web page. You're welcome to call it whatever you would like. I'm going to stick close to my script here and call it flick list. But be creative. There's definitely room for you to be creative and color outside the lines a little bit if you enjoy that sort of thing. Okay, 
So we put the title in. We're not worried about CSS today. Eventually we will be, but today we're not worried so much about CSS or anything like that. So our header is finished. What comes after the header? The body. And then I'm gonna make uh, I'm gonna make a title right on my uh, well title is the wrong word. We already put a title tag in there. I'm gonna put a little header in on the page itself. I'm gonna use an H1 tag to just put the name of the website in there. So far so good? Because this is where the exciting part starts to happen. This is where the good stuff starts to come into play. This is all just kind of set up stuff, right? Every, most of what we've done so far is just kind of set up stuff to get our web page up and running. And now we're, we need to do the actual work. This is where I'm now ready to say to the user, hey, here's, here's a box, type the name of a movie in this box, right? So how am I gonna do that? Form, form's going in. So I type in my form. What information do I need to give to this form? Input types, that's true, but before I get there, action. Action is usually one of the attributes that goes inside. So we have a decision to make now, right? If we, we just got started in this form, we already have a decision to make. Where do I want this information to be sent to? I need to pick a page on my website. Well, wait a second, how many pages do I have right now? One. I don't really have anywhere to send it. That's something that we're gonna have to fix. That's something that we're gonna have to fix later. Uh, but for now, we can make one up, just make one up, and then later come back in and actually create it. It won't work, right? This is only one half of the story. We have to create the second half before everything works. But we can, we can make something up and then come back and fill in the blanks later. So I'll call it um, add, right? Once this form is filled out and gets submitted, I'm gonna go to the page called add to add the movie, okay? What else do we need to decide right now? The, the method, the method. Honestly, there's probably not a wrong answer here, right? And if we have time, I don't know if we will or not, we might try it both ways. Um, does anybody feel super strongly about one way or the other? I kind of feel strongly, but if you guys feel strongly, I'm willing to bend to your will. Yeah. Sorry, Terry, I'm gonna do post. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, you tell Ryan about that later, he'll get a kick out of that. Yeah, sure. uh, all right. <laughs> We're gonna do post. If we have time, we'll do it again too. We'll do it both ways. We're gonna do a post request. I think it's a little more interesting that way. Um, maybe a slightly more complicated that way, but not that bad. Okay? No, I didn't ask for complicated or interesting. You're right. You're right. Um, okay. So now, I've set up the, you know, the high level stuff about my form. Where is this form data gonna get sent to? How are we gonna send it? What's, what's next? What's the next chunk of my form? What do I start to do now? What do I want this form to contain? I want this form to contain, how am I, how, what, what, uh, what am I gonna use to ask the user to type in a movie? A text box, a text box, right? So maybe we could talk about that next. Maybe we could talk about getting a text box in there. I can say something like, I want to add, and then here's where my text box goes, right? It's like a blank. It's like somebody's asking you to fill in the blank, right? How do I put a text box in here? Input. Inputs. Keep going, what's next? Type equals text. That's what we use for a text box, right? What else should I attach to this uh, input tag? <clears throat> Name, so I'll call it uh, new movie. Anything else? I'll put an ID in there as well. I heard another option, value. Should I stick a value on here? What does that do for us? 
it gives us a default. It, it pre-fills that field, right? So if I'm trying to sell you a movie, I could put the name of my movie in there. But if I don't, you know, I don't know that that's extremely appropriate uh, for this particular example. But it's, it's not a, I mean, that's something you certainly could put there, right? It's certainly allowed. No reason not to, but I don't think we strictly need it. I don't think we strictly need it. Um, am I forgetting anything? I do need a button. Am I forgetting anything about my text box? Yes. Turn the lights down, yeah. Oh, you're fine. Thank you for letting me You're all programmers, you need to get work, used to working by the light of your monitor anyway. <laughs> that's how it works. Thanks, thanks for the heads up. Hopefully that's better for you. Um, I can't see my notes now. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I'm all right, I'm all right. Um, what was I asking? Oh yeah. Is there anything else I'm forgetting about this input tag? There is, or I wouldn't be asking you, right? It's a classic teacher move. I need to close the tag. What's this called? We actually, we've seen a little bit of this, although I've, I haven't explicitly mentioned it. What, what am I doing here? Self-closing tag. Yeah, every, every tag has to have an open and a close, right? Every single tag has to have an opening and a closing. But sometimes we can cheat a little bit. If I don't want to type out slash input, right? If I don't want to type out a whole closing tag, I can just have a tag close itself by putting the slash at the end. You'll see that a lot of times with image tags. You'll see that a lot of times with um, other kinds of tags as well. So just self-closing tag. Um, and then I'll just add a little bit more text down here. Okay. Yes, that was the other thing that somebody mentioned. We need a button. We need a submit button. How do I how do I do that one? How do I put a submit button in here? Another input tag, right? Input type equals submit. And then what else goes in? Somebody somebody said this earlier. Value, yeah, value is different for a button than it is for a text box, but it's kind of the same thing, right? What what label do I want that? What what do I want the button to say, right? So value, and this is you know, right? What do I want the button to say? Okay. Now we haven't tested any of this yet, which honestly makes me a little bit nervous. So what I want to do is basically wrap this up. Let's wrap this page up so that we can actually test it, see if we made any mistakes, see what's working, see what we still have left to do. So I'm going to close out my form. I'm going to close out the body. I'm going to close out the HTML. And I will, I will pause here for just a moment. Here's the code that we've written so far. It's kind of, it's kind of a lot, right? Uh, it mostly fits on the screen, which is good. Kind of a lot. We haven't tested this. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. I'm gonna to count to 30 or so and then we'll we'll try it out. Yes. I think this is where it's confusing. What's the difference here between ID and name? Yeah. What is the difference between ID and name? ID is one thing, whereas name is for a group of things, but if the group of things just has one thing in it, then a name is also going to be unique, right? A name could be applied to many items if we need it to. If we don't need it to, then it's just going to apply to one thing. I don't have a collection of stuff. Yeah. So like if you started putting movies in, ID is still going to be movie, but then... So let's say I had a bunch of checkboxes, right? I would have IDs that say checkbox one, checkbox two, checkbox three, but the name for each of them, if they're related, would be 
group of boxes or whatever the case might be. The name would be the same for all of them if I want them to be related as a group. It allows me to grab the group of checkboxes as one unit and then go through the group and pick each one out individually. It's really important with radio buttons. Yeah, especially important with radio buttons. With radio buttons, right, I have four buttons and I can only select one of them. How does it enforce that? Well, it looks at all radio buttons that have the same name and makes sure that only one of those radio buttons are ever selected at one time, right? So then is the ID required on those situations? You have to have both? I believe, so. I'm, the ID I think is actually, in general, more important than the name. Okay. Uh, when I'm looking up uh, parameters on the processing side of things, it's usually doing it by ID. Yes. If you're gonna forget one, name is probably the one to forget, but don't forget, don't forget them. No. Or no, I'm sorry. With the post method, the name, you're right. With the post method, the name is the thing that goes in the dictionary. You're right. We'll see that in just a moment. Uh, let's try this out, actually. Let's see what we've got working. It's totally not done yet, but let's see what we've got working and what we don't. Um, sorry, this orange flashing thing is just driving me crazy. Sorry about that. Um, all right. So I want to start this up. First thing I need to do is what? I need to activate the virtual, what you call it? Yeah. Technical term. Hello? Okay, there we go. I don't know why that took so long, but that's all right. We did it. All right, what's the next step? Just run it. Python. Uh, main.py, right? My computer is a little bit slow right now, but not too bad. All right, and it looks like everything's up and running, so then the next step is to, ooh, man, that's really bright. Uh, go over here to this guy. Uh-oh. What happened? Did I save? That's a good question. It's a very good question. Thanks. There uh, you go. Always. Always. This looks better. So I can see the form, right? It, it looks good. I can see the, the label that I put here. Uh, I can even type in, you know, a movie that I want. And I can click the button. What's going to happen? That'll break which is worse than nothing, maybe, I don't know. Maybe not, actually. Nothing sometimes is a very scary thing to happen, right? <laughs> if you're expecting something and you get nothing, that can be very uh, stressful. Um, so sometimes I'd rather see it break, but here it's saying, I don't know what the heck you're talking about, get out of here. Um, now though, we can actually play around with this a little bit. You guys, uh, I, I you know, was a little heavy handed and said we're gonna use a post request, but if I wanna use a get request, we can actually see the difference between the two a little bit. Notice the URL up at the top. And if I go back and do a refresh just to be safe and then type in the matrix again, right? Hit the button. You can see that now this time with the get request, it actually sticks the thing up there in the, the address bar. So you can see part of the difference between those two methods, right? Just by switching, switching it in your code. Um, and you could certainly process this form this way. There's really no harm in people looking over my shoulder and seeing that I enjoy this movie, um, right? It's not super secretive information. Um, pretty well-known fact by now, actually. Uh, but we're gonna stick with the post request uh, for now. We're gonna stick with this post request for now. Um, any questions about what we've done so far before I move on to the next part? Any questions? So we've got some more work to do. We set up the form side, now we need to set up the side that's gonna take the information out of the form and do something with it. That's the next step. Um, how do I do that? How do I, what, what do I need to do to process this form? Another route, I need to set up another route. That's exactly right. I need to set up, uh, I like the word that you just used. It's called a handler. I need to set up a, yeah. Uh -huh. How did you end up doing it here? I deleted everything and, and wrote it. 
yeah, whatever, whenever you check out the walkthrough branch, the first step is delete 90% of it and then write this code in. Um, if you didn't follow along or you got stuck, right, and you didn't get all this code down, don't worry. You'll get, you'll get a copy of this code once we're done, right? Don't worry about it. We'll make sure that you get a copy of this code once we're finished. Uh, if, you, if you miss something or you're worried that you're not catching everything, we'll, we'll make sure you get a copy. Um, so we need to set up another route to uh, handle this form, right? So how do I do that? What do I need to start typing down here? App. I'm sorry? Oh yeah, I forgot. I should just look at what we've got up here, right? This is a route for, what's this called? The root, good. Slash is same as saying the root. Uh, but So we're not doing a route for that page anymore. We're doing a route for a different page. This time we're doing slash add. Do I need to do anything else here? Do I need to do anything else here? Methods, methods. What am I? What am I doing here? I'm doing a post. So I'm telling it that I expect this handler to work on post requests that are sent to this page. Now keep in mind what that actually means is I can set up two handlers for every page if I wanted to. I could set up one that handles post requests, and I could set up a, a handler that does something totally different based on get requests if I wanted to. Right? But we're using a post request. We know it's going to be a post request because we said so in our form. Right? We know that's what it's going to be, so we need to tell it that we're expecting a post request to come in. Okay? Any questions? It's an important concept. We're setting up the route. We're setting up the route here. So what's next? What am I doing next? We make up a function. <coughs> Call it whatever you want. You can call it add movie if you want to. That's what I'm going to call it, but you can call it whatever the heck you want. It's your function. Okay. And so let's talk about, let's walk through this function in English and then we'll figure out how to turn that into code. I want to take the movie that the user typed in, right? So get whatever that value is and then say, you know, this movie has been added to your list. That's, that's really all I want to do, right? Get the name of the movie they typed in and say, this movie's been added to your list. But we need to start from the beginning, right? We need to start from the very beginning. This is a brand new page, totally separate from my other page. So all pages start with doc type and HTML and all that stuff. Guess what? I'm just going to grab that from up here. I'm not going to do that over again. I'm going to grab that from up here. All right. How do I grab the name of the movie that they typed in? How do I get that? So, so if I look at the form, right, I see here's the text box. That's where they typed it in, right? I see I applied a name and an ID. They happen to say the same thing. Right? How do I actually get the data out? What do I need to say in the code to get that information? Call a function? Request form, yeah. This is a post request, so we're gonna go through that dictionary, that form dictionary. So I'll say new, whoops, movie equals request dot form, and then I need to type in the name of the thing that I want to pull from the form, which is called new movie. I have to import the request, that is correct. I was going to let it break, but you're a step ahead of me. You're too, you're too smart for me. I, need, I do need to import the request. Thank you. We would have found that out the hard way eventually. Okay. So now I have the name of this movie and I just need to get this inserted in here somehow, right? 
And this is a little bit ugly, I think, what I'm about to do, but it kind of works, I guess. Um, plus new, right? Just do a little concatenation. Has been added to your list. And then uh, that's really all I want to say, right? Just close out the tags after that, slash body, slash HTML. Did I skip something? So I just did a little bit of string concatenation there to stitch the movie, the name of the movie in. I'm almost done. What am I missing? I'm sorry? Return the content, yeah. So I'll pause here. I'll pause here for just a second. Give you guys a moment to catch up in case I went a little bit too quickly. So I typed out the first chunk, then I concatenated the new movie in, which I pulled from my request, right? So I pulled the, the name of the movie from the request. This is just a variable that hold, now holds whatever they typed into that box, right? Whatever movie they typed into that box is now inside this variable. So I start coding the page, I concatenate the name of this movie in there, and then, right? I'm sorry? Yeah. This is part of my content string, though, isn't it? Take a look what we did up here, right? Quotes at the beginning, quotes at the end. What, what do I have here? I have this string, which is like this, the bottom part. I have this string, which is the top part. And then I concatenated the name of the movie in between where it needed to fill in. If this makes you uncomfortable, good, because this is actually not, the, not a great way of doing things. And I'm not gonna end this walkthrough without fixing it up a little bit, right? If you don't like this, I'm glad because I don't like it either. I'm serious. I don't like it very much, but I think it'll work and I wanna test it, and I wanna test it. So let's say this here, I know, and go back to our page and see if we have better luck this time. See what I screwed up. Uh, I guess I'll refresh it. I don't know that I needed to refresh it, but I'll do it just in case. Maybe, what happened? Hey, hey, wake up. Come on. I'm sorry? It, it, oh, well, all right, I'll restart it, fine. I didn't want to, I was being lazy, but it seemed like I needed to, that's okay. All right, cool. Oops. Hey, all right, my, my grammar's not the greatest, but whatever. Uh, it works. It works. So this is just a string, right? Quotes indicate that I have a string. So there's a string. This is also a string that I happen to pull from the request. So when I use a plus sign with strings, what is that? Concatenation. So I take this string, I concatenate the name of the movie onto the end of it, and then I concatenate the rest of this stuff onto the end of that. I'm, I'm basically just stitching the page together. But I have to do it this way because this is a variable. I can't just type the name of the variable in the quotes, right? If I if I take all this stuff out, then that that's not going to cut it for me. If I do it like this, I know what I mean here, but the computer is going to interpret this very differently. It's it's going to say new movie has been added to your list. That's not what we mean, right? It's not what we were looking for. So we have to do some concatenation here to make that work. But this is not very clean. It looks it looks weird, right? It doesn't look great. Um, before I before I fix some problems here, are there any questions about what we've done so far? We, we achieved our main goal, but there's some other things that I would like to discuss with you before we end this walkthrough. Any questions? Yes? I'm a little confused up above where you did method equal post. Yes. And then down here you have method equal post. If you had get up there, 
I, I get the part about get show who you're very sure yeah by, but would you does post out there mean that you are processing data that was entered into the form or so let's switch it to get it, it, will this still work if I switch that to get It won't work because by putting this here, I am saying specifically that I am expecting a post request to come in. And now my form is not sending a post request anymore. It's sending a get request. Okay, so they match. They, they do need to match, yes. They do need to match. But, but I mean, I could switch this to get and still make this work if I wanted to. In fact, you know, we have a little bit of time. How would I, how would I use a post or a get request here instead? What, what would that change? How would that change my code? I can't do request.form. What can I do instead? Args.get. What was it? This? And now I believe we've done the same exact thing. I, th I think it'll work. I mean, let's try it out. Take two seconds to give it a shot here. Hey, yeah, so there it is with the get request. The difference is I can also see it up here in my address bar, right? In this case, does it really matter? Eh, no, not a ton. You didn't need the method down and, I, and I took the, the method off, yes. If I don't have a method, it assumes it's a get request. I can type get in there if I really want to. It won't stop me, um, but it'll assume it's a get request unless I tell it otherwise. Right. But what this allows us to do, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, is I can set up one page that can accept both get requests and post requests and treat them differently. I can do different things based on the type of request that I get in. Uh, and we'll see examples that do exactly that as we get into uh, adding more and more features to this. Um, what was I going to say? There's some other problems actually with this website that you may have noticed, uh, for example. Um, I can come and, oh, do I have to restart my thing again? Whatever, I'll just do it just in case. I can come here and do this. Oh, that's less than ideal, right? So we have, we have not actually done any kind of checking to make sure that what they've entered is reasonable at all, right? I can type in any garbage here that I want, and it just happily accepts it and says, cool, thanks, right? So that's a problem. That's a problem that we're going to talk about here very soon in the next week or two. We'll talk about how to do validation to um, make sure that they actually give us values that seem reasonable. Um, so just some other things to keep keep an eye out for. Uh, before we wrap this up, we got time. We're actually doing great on time. Let's fix this a little bit. This isn't looking so hot. Now, what I want you to notice, and this will help you for the studio as well, what I want you to notice is that I've got some repetition here, right? In fact, you even saw me just copy paste some junk when I was making the second page. I've got this stuff, right? I've got uh, this stuff that shows up on both pages, right? In fact, we have a name for that, for web, for web pages, we would call that a header. And I also have some repetition at the end. It's not a lot of repetition, but it's a little bit of repetition at the end, right? These closing tags are repeated. And I would call that a footer, right? Um, if I was designing web pages. So I've got a header, and I've got a footer, and I've got the stuff in between. I've got the stuff in between, which is the content, right? That's the stuff that really changes a lot. So instead of typing it all out twice like we did, I think it's a little bit more efficient to take this stuff and put it in a variable up here, like this, page header equals right separate it out we'll do the same thing with the footer pay oops page footer oh come on equals go down and grab the footer stuff which is this and 
stick it in. Oh, goodness, you messed up my formatting. How dare you? Whatever. Doesn't really matter, I guess. That much. Matters to me. Right? So now, when I want to create content for my pages, I can just say page header plus the stuff that's going to go in the middle, right? Plus page footer. It makes it look a little bit nicer. And then I can also come down here and do the same thing, right? <laughs> I can take all of this out. I can say page header plus new movie plus that little phrase. plus page footer. I know that line is long. Let's see if I can uh, show it a little better. I don't know. I like it better as one line, honestly. Uh, maybe that text is too small. But anyway, um, so instead of typing out all of that content all over again, right, I can take the duplicate stuff, I can make it into global variables, and then just concatenate it on. And now the method just uses those variables and only says the things that are different. Do you see that? It, it's only listing the differences. I did not change any functionality. I did not add anything. I did not remove anything. I just reorganized my website. I just reorganized. In fact, this is something that we do so often in computer science that we have a name for this. This is called refactoring. It's a very important skill. Refactoring is the process of taking a web page and reorganizing the code without changing how it works. Right? I want it to work exactly the same as before. I just want to clean it up a little bit. I just want to make it a little bit more organized. I just want to keep things a little bit tidier. Um, so that's what this is an example of, is refactoring, taking that content, separating it out into these variables, and then reusing those variables over and over again instead of uh, um, typing up the same stuff. Does anybody have any questions about what I did? Yes? Um, I have a question back on the, the triple tip. Okay. So up there when you define the variable page header, mm -hmm. that could have been in double tip. Right, tip, double tip, blah, 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 you're streaming and then you're double tip. So well, are you saying you have to use the triple when you're pulling an HTML tag? When do I have to use triples? Multiple lines, multiple lines. Multiple lines. If the text that I'm writing out goes across multiple lines, I have to use triples. Okay. If it's all in one line, I can actually just use singles, I think. Okay. Yeah. And when we're typing out HTML, like this in big chunks, it's almost always going to be multiple lines, so it's convenient to do that. But does everybody understand what, what I did here by abstracting this out? And do you see how much nicer this looks now? Right? I don't have all that you know, repetitive stuff every single time. I just have a variable there, and I can worry about the stuff that changes. And if you don't believe me that it works the same way, you know, we, can, we can run it again. Am I still using? It doesn't matter if I'm using a get request. It doesn't matter. So it'll work both ways. Right. That page looks the same. This page looks the same. Everything's still working exactly the same. We just cleaned up our code a little bit. We just organized a little bit. Later on, we'll actually show you some more uh, industrial strength, I guess, uh, reorganization techniques to keep your code even more organized, more clean. But based on what we know right now at this moment, this is, uh, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. Yes, what? I'm sorry? Scroll down. Scroll down, yeah, sure. Uh, what questions do you have? What questions can I answer for you? Anybody? They have any questions? Yeah. Did you have a question? Is ID only used for get methods? Is ID only used for get methods? I mean, let's just solve this once and for all, right? I'm not ashamed to look stuff up. Uh, the name attribute is used when sending data in a form submission. Okay. 
Yeah, different, different rate, several radio buttons with different ID attributes. This is the example we were just talking about, but the same name. When submitted, there's just one value in the response, the radio button you selected. Um, I mean, it, it seems like they're both used for processing forms, right? It's not, a one, it's not necessarily a one or the other. They work together. Names are used for putting things in collections. IDs are used for uniquely identifying each individual element. So if I want to narrow it down to one specific element, then I'm going to look for the ID. If I'm going to try and narrow things down to a group, I'm going to look up the name. Yep. Uh, this is not the last time we'll see examples of using forms by any means. We're, we're going to see lots more of this stuff. Um, so we'll, we'll get more practice with names and IDs as time goes on, I promise. What other questions do you have? Any other questions? Now, um, just a couple more things before I wrap up here. <clears throat> For the studio, I don't want to spoil too much of the studio because I want you to do it uh, on your own time with a partner or with your TFs. But um, for the studio, you're going to check out a new branch, right? It tells you down here um, to commit your stuff and check out a new, uh, check out the Studio 2 branch, right? That's the first thing it tells you to do. You'll commit your walkthrough to code. The Studio 2 branch, when you check it out, guess what? It's got the solution to today's walkthrough. So if you fell behind or you lost uh, lost you somewhere, you didn't quite follow along, you, or you didn't have your computer with you, or whatever the case may be, uh, if you check out the Studio 2 branch, it's got a solution to the walkthrough in it. But it does not, it probably does not look exactly the same as this, right? I don't know if you can tell, but I kind of like to wing it a little bit. I kind of like to go off script sometimes. So what you see in that branch probably doesn't look exactly like what we did here, but it's pretty close. It's in the same ballpark. So if you need to, take a few moments to go over that stuff. Um, make, make sure you understand the concepts from the walkthrough. Make sure you understand what the, the code in the Studio 2 branch is doing before you hop into today's studio, because the concepts are gonna rely heavily on what we did uh, in the walkthrough today. Um, any more questions before we split up? Uh, if somebody's sitting next to the lights wouldn't mind flipping those back on, we'll go ahead and break up into our groups. Thanks.